So this is an example of uh, Archipilot's uh, MATLAB SIDL backend. So here I am uh, in MATLAB in simmulticopter.m, which is the example for simulating a copter. Uh, so I'll just run this. So you can see we are uh, actually loading in a MEX file that does the UDP communications with uh, Archipilot. Uh, this is actually from the uh, community toolboxes uh, for MATLAB, and this is free, which is a big advantage, and it's actually much faster than the MATLAB one uh, you can get via the official toolbox. Uh, and we've actually included the pre-compiled uh, MEX file in the uh, repository. So if I just start uh, SITL here, and I just started with tag F uh, JSON, and then this is the IP address of the machine where MATLAB is running. So we can straight away see oh, it's connected. Uh, in this case, we're running uh, 400 frames a second. And there's our little copter. So whilst that's getting a GPS lock, I'll just show you. So this is the main Archipilot repository. So if we go libraries, right down the bottom, SITL, examples, JSON. So there's a Read me here that explains how the JSON uh, format is defined. Uh, so it should be quite easy for you, for people to add uh, other uh, SITL backends that use this same uh, protocol. We already have a, a Python one, and then this is the MATLAB one. So if we go MATLAB, again, there's another README that explains a little bit how it works. And then if we go into the Copter example, again, a, a little bit of a README that should help you uh, get up to speed with what's going on. Right, so back to our copter here, and we've got GPS lock. So this is just uh, works as it would with any uh, SITL, whoops, any SITL uh, backend. So let's arm the throttle. There we go. Pull up some throttle. Whoops, not that much. There we go. And we've got some height there, and I've actually loaded a mission, so let's switch into auto. And we'll put the throttle uh, back to neutral so it doesn't catch us out later. And I can load a virtual horizon so we can see what's going on. So you can see we're running quite happily at 400 frames a second. And this is a completely lockstep scheduled. So you can see the copters flying around. And I might wonder, oh, what is the actual uh, thrust uh, at the moment? So I can just stop MATLAB. Here's the force. So let's just look at the force. So we've got uh, 19 Newtons. This is actually in northeast down reference frame. So that's 19 Newtons up. Uh, and you can see. Uh, it's actually completely paused SITL. So uh, MavProxy's got upset because there's no link. That's because the vehicle's paused. Uh, so let's just take out the breakpoint and we just carry on as normal. So you can speed up just as you can with normal speed up. So let's try a, a five times speed up. So this is handy if you're simulating a plane and you've got uh, some really long mission to test or whatever it might be, you can run here. We're running at uh, five times real time. And equally, if you've got some really fine, complicated physics, we can put the speed up back to one and we could change this new parameter that's uh, been introduced. Uh, pram is called sim underscore rate underscore hertz. So this controls the physics time step. So at the moment, you can see we're running uh, at 400 frames a second at real time. So if I set this to 1000, you can see straight away we're bumping up. So now we're running a thousand frames a second, but we're still running at real time. So this has uh, made our physics time step much finer. So if you've got some very complicated vehicle you're trying to simulate, it might be uh, important to have a very small physics time step. But this limit, so we we, we have a, like a, an absolute limit of, uh, in, this, in this computer, it's about uh, two and a half thousand frames a second. So you can either run big time steps 
uh, lots of speed up, or you could run really small time steps at real time. And if you if you really need the the tiny time steps, you can run uh, at slower than real time. So let's uh, just ex do an example of that. So let's say I need five thousand uh, frames a second for my physics to get that right. So you can see we're completely failing to reach five thousand frames a second, but it doesn't fall over. It just runs at slower than real time. So you can see we're we're just barely moving along here. So let's put this back to 400. So actually 400 for a copter is the lowest uh, you should go for the frames a second because the copter loot rate is uh, 400. So if you go lower than that, uh, it starts to miss stuff uh, because it'll copter will have spent two loops on the same bit of physics basically. Uh, so actually plane and rover only run at a uh, 50 hertz loop rate. So you could get maybe 20 times speed up uh, using plane or rover. So maybe I'm uh, I'm prototyping my uh, RG pilot code with this backend, and I've I want to make a, a change, so I just stop uh, RG pilot and I restart it, and you can see MATLAB has straight away it's picked up the controller's reset, it's on a different uh, port, and it's just uh, connected uh, as before, and equally. If we stop MATLAB, you can see this is Sittle. It's saying, oh, I have not received anything. I, I'm going to try sending. So it keeps trying to send. And then when you start your MATLAB up again, it receives and it's connected again. Um, so if you if you reset, reset RGPilot, uh, MATLAB automatically resets the physics. So you're back at the origin, but it, it doesn't work the other way around. So if, if you reset, MATLAB, RGPilot will still think it's it's flying because uh, that's useful in, in some situations rather than uh, resetting back to the origin and having to start again and wait for the EKF and, and whatnot. So this is the example in MATLAB and it's just a very basic copter. So we have this SITL connector helper function. Uh, and then there's an init function and a physics function. So the init just basically sets everything to zero. So we are at position zero, we've got zero velocity. And then this is the physics time step. So it's just for each motor, we're working out uh, a torque here and a thrust. And then we add up the thrust from all the motors, add up the torque from all the motors. And then uh, there's this little update dynamics function. So you probably wouldn't need to replicate this if you're if you're doing your own backend. This just takes the forces and the moments and converts it into accelerations, velocities, and updates the position. So hopefully, unless your vehicle is very complicated, you can just change how the forces and moments are calculated. And in this case, it's a copter with motors. It could be a, a a plane, and it could have wings that make forces and moments, or it could be a rover. It could be whatever you like. Uh, and as I showed earlier, you can just stop here. You could put in lots of pretty graphs that draw. Uh, you probably wouldn't get 2,500 frames a second if you're making pretty graphs, but you get pretty graphs instead. So hopefully there'll be lots of uh, exciting things and there's more work uh, that I'm gonna be doing over the summer to see what other exciting things we can do with MATLAB. Thank you.